My goodness, I am like a little kid the night before his birthday. I'm so restless that I just cannot sit still because today's the day we've gotten the fourth playable clan reveal for Bloodlines 2. This is a big one. Surely they've saved the best for last. Excitement is building. Tension. This is the moment we've truly been waiting for. And we know that the Chinese room are going to go all out. These devs do not stop. If we step back a little bit, the first two clan reveals, 15 second videos, 15 glorious seconds of footage of the game for each of those clans. Then for the third clan reveal, they shocked us all. They went a step further, we got a 57 second video showing everything off. Let's forget that half of that was NPCs having a conversation, it wasn't really gameplay. That doesn't matter, they really went all out there. But now, we've got something a little bit different. Close your eyes for me and have a guess at what we're going to be getting for this particular reveal. Did the Chinese room blow the budget last time? Are we going back to one of those 15 second videos? Maybe they're going all out here. Maybe it's a two minute video, a three minute video. Hell, maybe they want to show us the extent of their passion. We're going to get a genuine 20 minute gameplay showcase. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to just to lower your expectations slightly. I don't want you to be disappointed. If we have a look at exactly what they've shown us this time around, it is not exactly a video. It is five frames. It is a GIF. It's a bit like those Captain Underpants books, if you remember, where you flick through and the image looks like an animation. It's genuinely five drawings, and they call it concept art. I think that might be a bit of a lie because none of the previous gameplay videos they've shown look anything like this. This sadly looks better than the actual game. It's just someone who's drawn these images to make it look like something's actually going on. Like, this is what we're going to get from the clan. By the way, the fourth clan is the Venture. If you're not familiar with all the clans, the Venture are a bit of a bread and butter, meat and potatoes clan for the Vampire the Masquerade universe. Not particularly out there, a very safe decision. And it basically means most of the playable clan choices out of the four are very safe. Now, they certainly haven't hidden the fact that we're going to get two DLC clans. Not free. This isn't Cyberpunk or something. You are going to have to spend more money on these additional clans. But you just know if we're going to get anything interesting, it is going to be a clan you're going to have to buy. You're going to have to spend more than that initial $60, $70 if you want to get those really interesting Fair Dinkum clans. That's just how it is going to be. But what this proves, the fact that they can't even put together a video this time... To me, it's proof that they have barely developed anything for Bloodlines 2. You might have seen 15 second videos and thought, yeah, there's a lot going on here, we can work with this. But I'll tell you, those videos we've gotten, that NPC cutscene with Fire and the Nosferatu, I believe, this is it. A few snippets of gameplay, supposedly, some animations, nothing else. Even Hard Suit Labs, the previous dev who were fired, they had more to show. They at least had dialogue options, people walking around. The Chinese room can't even show that much at this stage. And all it really tells you is the game is not in a good place when we are so close to release. If this was any other role-playing game, I would not be criticizing it this heavily. It's not a bad thing to have concept art or a couple of snippets out there. In most cases, sometimes if you're a small dev, you're trying to make your mark, maybe that's all you've got to show. You're trying to build interest, gather feedback. That's fine. The difference is, most games at that stage, there isn't a release date, or at least that's very far into the future. Bloodlines 2, though, it's 12 months away, the end of 2024 at the very earliest. And I've never heard of a role-playing game where the only thing they've developed is pretty much a few screenshots, maybe the tiniest animations possible. 
and then they've gone on to release an absolute banger 11, 12 months later. It doesn't happen in the year 2023. You can probably give me an example from the 90s or something where a great studio put something together. Maybe if we look at more recently, a Fallout New Vegas, that was put together pretty quickly. But there's always circumstance there. Fallout New Vegas, they had another game in Fallout 3 to directly work off, and it was still rushed that 12 months. They weren't able to finish it to their liking. Bloodlines 2, they maybe have some of the work that Hard Suit Labs did to go off initially, but is that a good thing? Because Paradox only fired them because they were so incompetent. The game was an incredible mess. Sure, they were able to show more footage than the Chinese room, people walking around and such, but we know there was no working game there. Paradox wouldn't have flushed all that development money down the toilet if it was salvageable. It wasn't. So whatever the Chinese room is working with, it's scraps. It's no good. The game's going to be a mess. I just don't want people to get excited, start talking about, oh, well, we've heard a couple of good things from a dev diary where the game developers had a chat and they were talking about how there's going to be choice and consequence. You can pave your own way. Easy to say that, but when you can't show it, you've got nothing. These devs do not have anything. And if we jump up to the top here, I did jump the gun. I wanted to show you those five screenshots, the GIF, because it was so exciting. But if we have a look at what they say, last month we announced three of four playable clans in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, the Bruja, the Tremere, the Banu Akeem. Today we'd like to share the fourth clan with you, the Ventru. The clan assets for Ventru are in the process of being finalized, and yet you still chose to share them so close to release. Why don't you show something you've actually finished, you've polished, and it's looking decent? Oh, I know, because you don't have anything. This is it. Everything you've shown us is all the work you've done on the game. There's nothing hiding in the back room, a secret project the devs are working on. This is all you've got. And they go on to say, and we will share assets and gameplay showing off the play style of Ventru during next year. Okay, so sometime in the year of release, you'll show us that the game is working. I am truly filled with confidence. Ahead of that deep dive, we're showing off an in-game render of fire in one of the Ventru-themed outfits. And of course, all clans can earn all the outfits, meaning the outfits themselves aren't even distinctive to the clans. We don't even really know what the difference are going to be for these clans, apart from maybe some combat abilities. And we all know there's going to be outfits that you can buy with real money. There's going to be microtransactions, most likely as well. Paradox, the publisher, pretty scummy when it comes to DLC, so I will not be surprised. Following launch, two additional clans will be made available in DLC. AKA, you're going to have to give us more money to get the complete experience. That's the modern gaming experience, of course. I'm not even shocked. Who are the Ventru? The Clan of Kings, Blue Bloods, Tyrants, Warlords, Patricians, Borgias. Is it Borgias or Borgias? I'll have to brush up on my history. Ventru vampires usually choose their progeny from mortals familiar with power, wealth, and influence. Seeing themselves as the rightful leaders of vampire society, kindred of Clan Ventru take up the mantle of leadership wherever possible, often in the form of high positions in Camarilla courts. We've of course got that concept art again. I keep getting more excited the more that I look at it. But the, they describe this image by saying Ventru powers focus on domination, forcing foes to obey your commands. Oh, very cool. So essentially mind control the enemy, they'll attack something. It's a nice sentence, but you just get the feeling it's going to be press a button, it'll make the enemy character attack something else. I doubt it's going to be too complex there, but they've got an opportunity to prove us wrong. Here's the great new image of Fire in her new outfit as well. The same haircut, but a, a different colour. Oh, playing as a venture in Bloodlines 2. Ventru are blue-blooded and purple-haired tyrants who incite obedience in both their allies and their foes. Using the disciplines of presence and dominate, they can mesmerize as well as awe their prey. Feeding builds up fortitude, allowing the Ventru to soak up more damage in case any enemy is powerful enough to resist their force of will. So what is this actually going to mean in terms of gameplay here? Feeding builds up fortitude. Is that just like you'll get a bigger armor bar or something, and then you won't take as much damage. I imagine it's something to that degree. They've 
got a good knack of making a complicated sentence to describe a really simple piece of gameplay. At least that's how I expect it will come out. And then they describe the concept art of fire with one of the Ventru styled outfits. All clans can earn all outfits. What's next? Following the holiday break, we'll be back with an extended gameplay reveal in Jan 2024 before going into depth on each playable clan during the opening months of 2024. They are going to be scrambling. You come Jan 2024, they've had a Christmas break. They get back there on their first day of work in the new year. They're going to be shitting themselves. They're going to be thinking, fuck, we've got nothing. We're going to have to cobble something together again. Will another 15 second trailer cut it? Oh, what are we going to do? Don't let this studio get away with mediocrity. This is a sequel to the great Bloodlines 1 game. I'm not saying for sure it's going to be awful, but all signs point to it. I have seen so many games over the years that get hyped up, and then we get hit with the cold water. It's totally disappointing. We've been ripped off to some extent. And this just looks like... Exhibit A, it's going to be another one of these. And I don't know if they're more to blame or if it's Paradox, the publisher, who didn't want to spend too much money on doing the right thing with the Bloodlines IP because they wasted so much cash with Hard Suit Labs. Is it them who are to blame or is it the Chinese room and their bigger company, Sumo Digital, over-promising and saying they could get a good game out quickly? I don't really care who's to blame. I just know if it's crap, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to be leaving negative reviews everywhere I can, at least in places where I don't have to purchase the game. We've got to let them know that this isn't okay. They've got to put the work in. If it means delaying the game to make it better, actually putting that time in, I realize that's coping and they're probably not going to do it. But what I want to do for you now is take you through all the clan reveals and what we can expect from this game and break it all down. Since we likely won't get any more news until 2024, we're going to do a quick recap. Bloodlines 2 was originally announced back in March of 2019, with a release date set for March of the following year. It was then delayed into 2021 soon after. This of course was with the original developers Hard Suit Labs, and while fans were sceptical, there was some optimism that it would be good given that original creator Brian Mitsoda was on board. And there were even industry legends like Chris Avalone who'd done some work on the writing. All of that goodwill was eventually lost though when Mitsoda was unexpectedly fired. This caused interest to reach rock bottom. News then came out in 2021 that Hard Suit Labs had been fired as devs and development had been moved over to another undisclosed studio. Earlier this year, we finally learned that the Chinese room were the new developers responsible. Online message boards filled up with question marks due to this studio having never worked on an RPG before. Their experience was with adventure games like Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, Dear Esther, Games that are often described as walking simulators, given that they have very little gameplay and are almost always entirely narrative driven. In their defense though, the team working on Bloodlines 2 isn't actually an existing Chinese room team. A brand new team was put together by the company and it exists of developers such as game director Alex Skidmore. He's not really known for any particular role-playing games outside of Fable 3, but he was a lead designer on Gear Tactics, a Gears of War spin-off. So if you want the positives, that's it. Positive news over right there. Chinese Room's marketing of the game kicked into gear soon after, commencing with the reveal of Fire, the main playable character. Unlike the original Bloodlines, your character is already decided for you, and the only choice that you'll likely make is going to be which clan you'll be part of. Some people do point out that the original Bloodlines didn't actually allow you to customise your character's look either. However, you could customise your character quite a bit from a gameplay perspective. It is also likely that the lack of a character builder in terms of aesthetics, like your hair, your face, all that sort of stuff, in Bloodlines 1, that was purely due to running out of dev time. Given the game was being rushed by Activision, the publisher, this likely wasn't a design choice. 
The reveal of a predetermined character was mostly met with a negative reception from fans who were fearing for the role-playing aspects of the game. This, along with Chinese Room's lack of RPG experience, was not helping matters, and the dialogue options shown in the initial reveal video with Fire, they were also looking pretty limited. That video showed a weak number of choices that you could make while in conversation, and were a far cry from the options usually available in Bloodlines 1, or even what we saw of Bloodlines 2 by Hardsuit Labs. Next, Chinese Room unveiled their plans to reveal the four playable clans that would be available upon the release of the game. In every one of these reveals, they've made it crystal clear that two more clans would be available in the future via paid DLC. This left a very sour taste with fans, given that the original Bloodlines had seven playable clans, and yet you'll still end up with less in the sequel, even if you shell out more money post-launch. The clans that have been revealed are as followed. First was the Bruja, marketed as the Brutal Melee Playstyle clan with abilities otherwise known as disciplines, such as Charge and Body Slams. Tremere was next. They have abilities more akin to a mage in traditional fantasy, rewarding you for staying at a distance and using arcane powers such as boiling your enemies in blood or ripping blood from their veins. Third was the Banu Hakim. This was probably the most surprising of the clan reveals, as it was a more out there clan compared to the first two, and it wasn't in the original Bloodlines. They described the role of this clan as being a strategic stalker, essentially the stealthy option, allowing you to stalk and assassinate your foes. Finally, there is the Venture, which we covered today. Its big gimmick is that you'll be able to force foes to obey your commands. Now, describing the clans in the studio's own words, it makes them sound fairly cool. The problem is, it's all marketing speak. It's incredibly easy to promise the world through text, but when you've got no footage to back it up, that is when it should absolutely fall on deaf ears. This is what is happening here. They've only shown snippets of footage. Most of the clan reveals, they've been 15 second trailers, or in the case of the Ventru, no footage was provided at all. As gamers, we've been let down by false promises so many times, and until these devs prove otherwise, this should be no different. Bloodlines 2, it has had an extremely shaky development. Two completely different studios have been involved, and the latest ones pitched to the publisher. Their pitch to Paradox was supposedly focused on getting out a game quickly. Quality is clearly not the priority here, and the aim is for Paradox to try and cover the losses of all that money that they lost through Hardsuit Labs. Unless they shock us with unexpected news, January 2024 is when we'll find out more, and until then, I'm going to give you a piece of ancient wisdom passed down by the very gods themselves. Do not pre-order. Thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.